Welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're gonna dive further into ACR, which is Adobe Camera Raw. Now a lot of you are gonna be wondering, oh my God, it's the third video. Why are we not in Photoshop? ACR is an integral part of the process. Do not skip Adobe Camera Raw if you are shooting raw files and you should be shooting raw files when possible. Just so you know, all the files we're gonna be using in these tutorials, you are going to be able to download. So if you want the link to download this image, it's gonna be in the description below. I'm gonna go ahead and hit open and I'm gonna grab this and we're gonna open this file. We are now in Adobe Camera Raw. And this is the raw image capture. And before we went over just the global, and when I'm talking global, I mean, whatever you adjust it, it's affecting the whole image. Today, we're gonna go into the second half, which is a selective adjustment, where we're just applying an, an adjustment to a specific area. I'm also gonna just go over the basic tools. We're not gonna go over every single thing here in Adobe Camera Raw, because truthfully, it would probably take longer than the 10 minutes that I want to spend today. So we're going to go through some of this quickly and then I will slow down for the more important parts. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to decide what color profile that we are going to use. And in this case, I'm just going to use standard. I'm also going to change it to auto instead of as shot. And it looks like we got some golden sun coming through here. And so as shot, it was a little bit warmer. Let's see if we just dial some of that out. I think that looks pretty good. Now the issue with this photo is that we have one exposure here and then a different exposure here. If we start making global adjustments, so if I start darkening this to make the sky darker, this is probably gonna get too dark. And if I brighten this area to brighten this area, this is gonna get too bright. When you're making a global adjustment, don't do it or quit when it starts messing up the other area. In this case, we've got vastly different exposures between here and here. We're not really gonna make too many global adjustments because they need to be selectively done. And that's okay, there's no reason that you have to make an adjustment just because the adjustments are here. So in this case, we're going to go over and do selective adjustments. And that is done right here with the adjustment brush. Notice the letter K, if you hit the letter K on your keyboard, it will take you right over to this brush. So I'm gonna hit K and bam, just like that, it brought up the adjustment brush. Now the adjustment brush looks very similar to the global adjustment settings, but they're different. And it's gonna say adjustment brush right here and you'll know you're in it and you'll see this new add and erase, which is important. The first thing is the brush, that inner circle with a solid line inside that means you're going to get a hundred percent of the adjustment. The dotted line on the outside is the feather. If I come down here and I make the feather bigger, you're going to see the dotted line has expanded further away from the inside line. If I take the feather and I make it narrower, it's going to make it closer to that inside line. This is important. I usually work around 50, but I'm going to do an adjustment. And this is a, a, a ridiculous adjustment here. We're going to make this really, we'll make it really dark. Right now, I have my feather at zero, meaning there's no feather. If I make an adjustment, you're going to see that adjustment, though it's way too dark, has a very hard edge. When you're doing something like that, you're going to see where it overlaps, it's not gonna work usually. You wanna be able to blend it so you can't see what's happening. So as you increase the feather, you can see it gives it a softer edge and it allows it to blend better into the background. Now it's not doing a great job because we made some ridiculous adjustment here. It's very important to change the size of your feather. It's gonna take you a while to kinda grasp when it should be a harder brush and when it should be a softer brush. In general, just try to set it around 50. Flow will get into in density. This meaning 100% of the brush. If I did this, that adjustment, that's 100%. If I make the flow down to 51, it's 51% of the brush. That's kind of what density, 
flow builds up over time and we'll get into that but you should just probably just set your density and flow up to 100 that will make it the simplest so i'm just going to go ahead and click on this and hit delete so we can get rid of that because that adjustment was way too much now what we want to do here in this case is i want to darken the sky to bring back some of the detail that we're starting to lose what do we want to bring back some exposure so we'll try that normally what i do is you have these little minus and pluses let me do some wild adjustments here so you can see this. Every time you open up this panel, it's gonna have the settings that you last used. So in this case, I don't wanna use these settings. Well, having to come through, there's no like reset button. To come back in here and have to reset all these would take a while. But you can come over here and use these buttons. So in this case, I want my exposure to get darker. That's gonna be minus. If I click this minus, it's gonna automatically set everything else back to zero. So when I click this, it makes that minus 50, everything else back to zero. And I can dial in a little bit more and then I can come in here and apply that. So when you do the exposure, it's not gonna instantly apply it. You kind of have to paint it in with this brush. So now you can see how that brush sort of blends in against the trees. So it doesn't look like, so you can't see where it's actually happened. We'll come in here and just brush that in. And now you can see we've really brought that sky back. The cool thing about working in RAW is it is non-destructive. It's not actually applying it. You can't actually change your RAW file ever. It's not applying it. It's just showing you a preview of what this is gonna look like if you do this to this image. In that case, I can control it after the fact. So once I've brushed in the area that I wanna affect, I can come in here and slide this around. I can slide any of these things around. So I can say, oh yeah, that's really helping the highlights. I can bring back the highlights and that's deeping and darkening the sky. I can control my contrast a little bit. Anything that you would wanna do to your image, you can come in here and adjust. So we have temperature sliders, which is gonna be your color temperature, your tint, your exposure, and so on. Once again, I'm not using texture, clarity, dehaze, saturation, sharpness, any of this stuff at this point, this is something that I'm gonna do inside of Adobe Photoshop or after I've toned the image. Basically, I'm just sticking with this stuff here. I've come in here and I've made this adjustment and we've made this sky look better. Now I can come in here, I could open this area up if I wanted. So let's say I wanna do a new adjustment, but I don't wanna affect this area. I want to affect this area. I can come in here and click new and it's gonna give me a new brush. But remember, it keeps your default settings from your last adjustment. In this case, I want to open up my highlights a little bit, let's say. So in that case, I wanna open up, I'm gonna hit plus. It's gonna set everything back at the default of zero, except for my highlights. And then I come in here, and I'm gonna use my bracket key, which is next to the letter P. And the bracket key will make your size bigger or smaller instead of like going all the way down here and hitting size which is kind of a pain in the nest you have a left and a right bracket key so the left key makes it smaller the right key makes it larger so then i can come in here and brush or apply that to this area if you want to see the mask you can go like that and you can that way you can tell if you've missed anything so you can see i've gone over the edge here a little bit which isn't good now we can fix that so there's an erase function. Holding the Alt Option key will automatically give you the erase. Now I want my brush to be much smaller. And as you try to make a more accurate selection, you actually want to reduce your feather down a little bit and that will help you reduce. So what I'm doing now, my flow is way down. I want it all the way up. You can see I'm coming in here and just cleaning up that edge where it kind of bled over into the sky. I just want this area below it. Now it's not perfect, but it's good enough for a quick tutorial. And I could turn that mask back off. And now I can scroll back up here and then I can increase my highlights a little bit. And I can adjust this to however I want, but that's pretty good. I don't need to have dramatic adjustments. Truthfully, you do not want to have large adjustments. So if you have a big swing like this, 
that's that's not a good idea usually. That means you basically screwed up the photo when you took it. It wasn't a good exposure. So this looks pretty good. So I've just made two simple adjustments. The first one is on the foreground. And if I want to go back up here, notice this has a circle with a, a black dot. That means it's active. If I click on this one, this one is now active. So if I come up here and make an adjustment, let's see, this is negative 40. Notice it's, it's adjusting up here now. Just hit Command Z, that will go back. And if I want to go back here, I select that one. And now when I make this adjustment, it is affecting this area down here below. But we'll take that back to where we want. And you can make as many of these as you want. This is a, a different way to get to the erase too. Instead of holding the Alt Option, you can click Erase there. But I just hold the Alt Option and it gives me the Erase button. So that looks pretty good. We're going to say, okay, we're happy with the exposure on that. And we're going to go back and just click on the magnifying glass to get out of the adjustment brush. Notice we're back into basic. So the hand is just a move tool. And when you zoom up really quick, it allows you to kind of move around and navigate. A little quick hint, you don't actually need to click on the hand if you just take your finger and hit the space bar, it automatically turns into the move tool. That's a lot quicker. All right, so we'll go up to the next one. The next tool is the white balance tool, which is I. If you want to white balance your image, you can just come in here, click that, and then click somewhere in here, and it will white balance. I'll do it real quick. You can see it didn't change it because there's no detail there, but if I click it here, it's gonna totally change the white balance of this image. I'm gonna hit Command Z. The problem is the white balance is trying to make it a neutral gray, and I don't want to make it a neutral gray because we have this kind of warm uh, morning sun coming through the image, and it shouldn't be neutral. So unfortunately, the computer doesn't always know that. I rarely ever use that tool. Color sample tool, so if you want to sample a color and pick it, you would use that tool. This is for targeted adjustment. We will get back into targeted adjustment, but what targeted adjustment does is you pick an area. So I'll pick this fog. If I click on this and drag down, it's going to darken that area of the fog. And if I lift up, it's going to brighten that area. So it's looking at those values and anywhere in the whole image that has those values. And you can see in the sky, it's adjusting them. So we're just going to hit Command Z and that will undo my last step. Command Z is wonderful. You'll learn to love it. The crop tool, I absolutely don't crop in Adobe Camera Raw. I do that in Photoshop. We have a leveling tool, so if you need to level your horizon, you can come in here and level it. So you would click on this, draw a straight line, and then it will automatically level that area for you. We have a transform tool. We're not gonna get into the transform tool. This is something that you can do in Photoshop and it works a whole lot better. Spot removal tool. So this is kind of like a clone stamp, or if you have something that's, if I want to remove this little area right here, that's what the spot removal tool is. It's horrible in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. Definitely use Photoshop for any of this stuff. Red eye reduction. I don't get red eye, don't rarely use a flash. And if you use a flash correctly, you should never get red eye. The adjustment brush, the graduated filter. So this is good for skies and stuff like that. It's basically a mask that's graduated. Probably won't get into it, but if we do come across it, I will go over it. Radial filter is just the same thing here, except for radial. It's circular in blends outward. The open preferences dialog box we're not gonna use. To rotate your images, these two little buttons over here. Then over here, this is your basic panel, meaning that this the basic stuff comes up. The next is a tone curve. I don't really use the tone curve, which is strange because I love the curve in Photoshop, but I don't really use tone curve inside of this program. The next one is helpful. Not really sharpening, but noise reduction. If you do have to shoot at a high ISO and you want to reduce noise, you can just slide this over. And if you give it a second, you will see it. It will kind of work its magic and then you'll see it reducing the noise in this image. We don't need to do that. HSL adjustments. This is actually a pretty good tool, but what you have to remember is this is a global adjustment. When you do something in here, you can't specify it to one area. 
a lot of times colors don't come out how they're supposed to look, especially in portraits or photos of people's faces. You either get a cast or the wrong color and you need to shift it. So what you're going to do is come in here. Hue is going to allow you to change the color. So in this case, we'll go orange because we'll be able to see this. So I can make the orange more red or kind of more greenish yellow. I'm changing the color of the color. And any color that you find, most photos are going to be a combination of these first three. But if you have blue or green or something else in there, you can definitely adjust that color. Saturation is exactly what it sounds like. So you can desaturate that color or you can saturate that color and make it brighter. Most of the time, 99% of the time, you are desaturating. And luminance is making that area brighter or that color darker. If you have oranges and you wanna make them brighter, and it's actually more helpful than you think it would be. Most of the time when you use this, you're going just a little bit brighter, usually like three, four, five, something like that. That's HSL, very helpful. But don't do it if it's messing up another area because you can easily do this inside Photoshop. Split toning. I do split toning basically inside Photoshop, but you can come in here and do it if you'd like. Lens correction is next. You can use lens correction. I don't use it a lot just in general, but if I want to enable it, it's going to recognize the camera and lenses if it's in its system. Otherwise, sometimes you need to manually pick it out but it's gonna kind of correct for any distortion that it might have. It's not really helpful in images like this, but in architecture, you might see it. Special effects. So if you wanted to add noise or grain, you could add noise or grain. And if you want to vignette, you can do it. Now, vignetting is actually helpful and cool in this, but I don't actually do it in the beginning. This is something that I would most likely do in the end. So you can actually come from, go from Photoshop back into raw and then do this. And I have a, a cool little trick um, that I do this in a layer and I will show you that later. I don't use this calibration at all. These are presets. So if you've ever been in Lightroom and seen the presets, they do have presets and you can load your own presets. These are kind of just like automatic little functions. I'm not a big fan of presets because I think every image needs to be toned independently. And a lot of this stuff that I have, if I'm looking for a certain look, you can also do in actions inside of Photoshop and it's a whole lot easier and you can control some more information. So that's presets. The last thing is snapshots. Snapshots are, are so, sort of interesting. They let you toggle between states. We'll come over here. We're going to make an adjustment that's ridiculous so we can see it. Then we'll come over here to snapshots. I'm going to click down here. This will make a new snapshot. I'm not even going to label it. And then I'm going to go back here and I will adjust this back to where we had it. We'll come back to snapshots, take a new snapshot. Now we have two different snapshots. What it lets you do is you hover over one. It shows you what it looked like at that state, or you can come here and it shows you that state. If you want to go back to this state, you just click on it and then you go in here and you're back at that state. So it saves a progression of time element. And that's basically most of the stuff here inside of Photoshop. That's basically the gist of using the program. There's obviously some little nooks and crannies that we haven't really gotten into. But the major things you want to do are your global adjustments where you're affecting it and then your adjustment brush. Those are really the two key elements that we're going to go over. Those are the two most basic elements that I use in almost every image. Okay, and there we go. There is our image inside of Adobe Photoshop. And now we'd be ready to continue the editing process. Hopefully this has been helpful. You learned a little bit about Adobe Camera Raw. And guess what? Finally, next time we are finally going to get into working with Adobe Photoshop. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.